see. And uh, what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about studying engineering primarily at uh, University of Ulster McGee campus. And there's a few important things that I think we need to go through here uh, to make sure that uh, everybody understands what we're trying to do whenever we start to tell you about courses on the McGee campus. So let's have a look at some of the screens here. So if we, uh, if we look here, what we're going to do today in our overview is we're going to look at campus life for a start, giving people an idea of what the McGee campus in the northwest part of Northern Ireland has to offer. Uh, we're going to look at some of the engineering courses and then we're going to look at the careers that are available from those courses, some detail on the courses as well and then the requirements that there are to get in, and then an, an overview of engagement that the university completes to uh, tell you what's going on in the university and tell you what's going on in the courses. So let's have a look. Uh, the McGee campus has roughly 5,000 students uh, taking in full-time and part-time students. We're in the heart of Derry City, uh, and as you can see, it's, a, it's an absolutely beautiful campus. It's quite an old campus. Uh, having existed for over 150 years at this stage. Uh, we're an hour and 45 minutes from Belfast, an hour and 30 minutes from Dungannon, and only 40 minutes from Letterkenny. So we're not too far from anywhere really. And uh, the, 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 the campus itself offers you the opportunity of a fantastic, well-developed, uh, old campus that has that real university feel with red brick buildings and a large, you can see the large sandstone building in the background there. The students call it the Hogwarts building. And that uh, was the original uh, building that was on campus where the original teaching would have been done many, many years ago. And the campus has developed considerably since then. So recently, we have put together an 11 million state-of-the-art teaching facility, and that, that's to support teaching and support research. So we run research seminars there. We run uh, uh, events there to engage with students. We run events there to engage with schools. And that gives us the opportunity to showcase the sort of uh, courses that we do, the sort of talent that we have on campus at McGee, and a fantastic investment recently. Of course, investment must continue. And uh, one of the engineering related programs that, that's coming under investment now is what's called the Center for Industrial Digitalization, Robotics and Automation, or SIDRA. And this will look at in around 44 million for engineering and computing on campus over the next uh, three to five years at this stage. And we can begin to look at how that will uh, shape the courses that we offer at McGee and shape the industry that uh, we feed into. So that's the industry in Mid Ulster, the industry in the east of the province and the industry all across the west coast into Donegal and Sligo. And it's important that we feed into that. And, and as part of our engineering uh, courses, we have an emphasis on industry and an emphasis on manufacturing for industry and industrial digitalization and robotics are all a big part of that and things that will come along in the future. So coming to McGee as a student uh, to study engineering, certainly you'll have exposure to this sort of uh, industrial digitalization. And, and, and that will pave the way for you to be uh, very useful in industry over the next number of years. So just a few uh, pictures here of what goes on. And Derry, Derry City is a vibrant, vibrant city with a, a wonderful Peace Bridge and the world famous uh, Halloween celebrations, as well as the, the, the more recent uh, Dairy Girls series that was on the television. So there's lots of culture in the area. There's, of course, uh, just across the border in Donegal, you have the Wild Atlantic Way, and you have all the scenery that there is in Donegal with wonderful hiking and fishing, and uh, all the things that are there that are outside of your studies, but of course a very important part of being in a, a university city and be a very important part of, uh, of what we do at McGee is to make sure that both your cultural life and your uh, uh, social life and all is well catered for. And, and, and I think the town works extremely hard to make sure that 
everybody has the best time that they can. Uh, why would you study with us? In terms of that, we go by the overall student satisfaction record, and that really comes down to the National Student Survey. So National Student Survey, survey results come out every year, uh, and they are an independent application of questions to students to determine whether they have enjoyed their course, to determine whether they have uh, uh, got the best learning opportunities, to determine whether they've gone on to jobs, to determine a whole range of things about your course. In particular, the BN Honours Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering course scored the highest in Northern Ireland uh, across all the universities. So that's across Queen's and Ulster University, Jordanstown. They both offer mechanical engineering courses. So it's 94.7% uh, of students, that, and that's the highest score. For example, in, in one of the questions, the students are asked, uh, did the course offer me the opportunity to uh, be the best I could be? And 100% of our students said that. We can look at BSc Honours Computer Science and BSc Honours IT, and you can see how far they are above the subject sector average. To give you an idea, some of the other courses that, uh, some of the other institutions within Northern Ireland would be scoring in the 60s, 70s for mechanical and manufacturing engineering overall. So, so we're quite proud of that result. And I think it's an indication of the, the dedication that we have to our students here at the key. Uh, things that, Things that are an indication of that are, are our company engagement and across the School of Computing, Engineering and Intelligence Systems, you can see where that comes to the fore with our City Deal project, which is engineering related. And also then our all state sponsorship. So all state, the major IT company, completed a laboratory works in, in November 2019 with a brand new 55 seater laboratory, which is a dedicated resource to the school. So we manage it, we provide the computers for it, we ensure that they are at the top of what you require and, and have all the facilities that you need to do your best. And that leads on to working with, uh, with companies. You can see the list of some of the companies here, the likes of Seagate uh, that have been established in Derry for quite some time, the likes of e and i that are just over the border in Donegal, but with, with uh, uh, real estate in Derry as well. And you can see then some of the other companies there, Myola Precision Engineering, and most recently Terex, the Terex Corporation that have opened a factory just outside Derry in Campsie. And they intend to employ in the region of two to 300 people in the first phase of their development. And my understanding is there's a number of phases of development that will take place that will raise the workforce there. And uh, we're very glad to see them on site and we're very glad to work alongside them providing the engineering uh, graduates that they need to make sure the company uh, flies. And that goes for all companies. And, the list here you can see is only, only a selection of some of the companies that, that we're involved in. These companies provide sponsored prizes, they provide internships, and they sponsor the competitions that we have throughout the year to try and uh, drive innovation among the students, to try and develop relationships with the company so that our students, when they finish, have the choice to go directly to industry. Uh, and, and recent, uh, recent evidence among the engineering students, it's clear that they're going straight to industry and straight to jobs with very little, uh, with very little break in between finishing their course and starting their job, if they want. Some students, of course, go for their year out and take their year in Australia or take their year in New Zealand. Possibly not at the minute, but uh, certainly I know from my own experience last year, uh, quite a few of my final year students in both the mechanical and the renewable and the electrical engineering courses all had jobs prior to graduation. So it gives you an idea of the caliber of student that we put out. So if we take a look at the courses that are available at McGee, we have quite a range of courses here available for you. Uh, if, I start at the, if I start at the start, I suppose, 
We recently this year have opened up a Foundation Studies course. So what the Foundation Studies course does is it prepares you for entry to first year. Uh, the Foundation Studies course lasts one year. You'll complete four modules and, and all, all the, the finer detail is available to you if you contact me. But basically it's for students that haven't quite made the grade to get in i.e. the three B's or the B and two C's if you're on specialist subjects, or students that don't necessarily have the traditional engineering subjects and have decided they would like to do an engineering related course. This, or computing course obviously, this one year foundation degree completes a number of modules that allow you direct entry then to first year in engineering or computing courses across the McGee campus. So it's a very good way to get in if A-levels aren't your route or if the A-level results aren't what you thought they would be. On the more standard approach, we have the suite of five engineering courses here. So we have BN Honours Electrical and Electronic, BN Honours Mechanical and Manufacturing, BN Renewable Energy Engineering, and then we have Electrical and Electronic and Mechanical and Manufacturing Engineering with Enterprise. And these courses are a mixture of business and the engineering and in this case we are interested in developing students that have the the industrial sense to be able to develop new products to be able to sell new products to be able to work in the industry where you're not necessarily at the heavy technical end of engineering or you're more so at the developmental end of engineering maybe going out looking for venture capital money maybe looking at how we take a product from the laboratory or the workshop right out to industry. So very important and uh, quite apt at the minute uh, with, our, with our recent COVID uh, situation. You can see that there's an awful lot of engineers that are developing products such as face visors, uh, incubators, incubator boxes and a range of things there and taking them out to market. In terms of computing, we have our traditional and very, very popular computer science course we have computer science then with the software systems development specialism. We have information technologies and we have the very recent addition of the BN Honours Artificial Intelligence. All these courses, uh, for me, I think all these courses provide a wonderful opportunity for you to uh, learn in a fantastic environment where you can begin to uh, learn at a pace that suits you, be supported, throughout that learning and come away with, uh, with a rounded approach to this, the subject that you're in. So for computer science, for artificial intelligence, or indeed for mechanical and manufacturing engineering, the opportunities are there. I'll direct you to our YouTube page where you can hear from our computing and engineering graduates. I, uh, I, I truly believe the course is wonderful and, and I believe all the things that we offer on McGee campus within the School of Computing, Engineering and Information Intelligence Systems are, are excellent. Our students think that too and you should, I really would, would push you to go and see the, the YouTube site and see what they have to say. Uh, hear their stories and hear how they have grown from coming along as a, as a as a young uh, first year right through to a graduate and where they're going in industry. So the courses are there, but in more detail around where we are based, we are based in the Center for Renewable Energy. And uh, this Center for Renewable Energy is a center for mechanical engineering and renewables on the McGee campus. Now, what we do is primarily we will do research that feeds into the mechanics of renewable energy. So that research could be, how do we make turbines more efficient? How do we develop materials that will make energy conversion more, more applicable throughout the world? How do we create materials that will make the manufacture of energy conversion devices easier? And we do this in a number of ways. And, and research plays part of it, industrial liaison plays part of it, and industrial development plays another part of it. But within our center itself, we're based around two ideas. We have student learning, so that's experimental, manufacture, design. We, we're very, very keen on the idea that all our students come along and they must manufacture something. They must learn 
the hand skills of manufacture and, and, and they must be coupled with the, the analytical skills that come about from, uh, from your maths, from your science and from some of the subjects that we'll discuss later on in the webinar. It's important that we have an active learning process on McGee. That's what our courses are based around. So we have live projects and we have industry input to those projects. You know, for example, recently we had a project where we developed a, a conveyor, a folding conveyor of 100 feet long, so roughly 30 meters long, in as final years with a, a, a local company. The local company were extremely impressed with the results that we had come along. This year's project is slightly different. This year's project was what's called a human powered vehicle. So we, we had a team, and you can follow them on Facebook, the McGee HPV team, where they uh, developed a human powered vehicle to challenge for the world land speed record for, for human powered vehicles, which is roughly 90 something miles an hour, 92 odd miles an hour. And uh, our team, uh, earlier in the year before our recent, uh, our recent COVID situation, we're heading to Nevada to race that in September. So we'll obviously we'll put that off for a year and we'll go to Nevada next, next September to race it then. But it gives you an insight into the sort of projects that we do. We race Formula E cars. So we go to the uh, Formula 24, the Formula 24 Plus. We have a Shell Eco Marathon vehicle in development. We do 3D printing programs. We do composites manufacture. Our, our engineering society is very good at giving uh, courses and development afternoons outside of our course, our, our regular course timetable. So there's lots to do and lots to learn. Uh, I think if you go to the, 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 the YouTube site, you'll find Johnny Burnside. And he tells you that uh, if you want to make something, go to McGee. And I think that's, that's a very nice way to put it. Uh, so when we look, I suppose, one of the things we have to decide is what an engineer does. And I think it's important that everybody understands that engineers do lots. There are lots of jobs in engineering. You don't necessarily have to don a boiler suit and big boots and a hat and head off to build something. That's not what engineering is about. There's lots of jobs in design. And indeed, if you talk to many companies, they'll tell you that the future is in design engineers and the future is in working with bright young minds that can develop the machines for tomorrow, that can develop the structures for tomorrow. You can see the robots here, automating manufacture, automating a, a design and automating build are just some of the ways that a design engineer can affect a difference. But we also need engineers to make sure things are made. Uh, very often, very often we'll, we'll have discussions in the school about the relevance of engineering and, and how it's very good to design things, it's very good to come up with uh, uh, design scenarios, but we must be able to manufacture it. And uh, if you look at it, there's around 25,000 people involved in the manufacturing industry in Mid-Ulster and uh, Derry and Straban alone. So if we take that, uh, that level of jobs, then manufacturing is really important. If you look to the, uh, to the right of the screen, you'll see the, the lady in green standing beside all her wind turbine installations. These sort of items don't go up on their own. For example, a, a rotor or a single blade could weigh in the region of 20 tons. How do you get 20 tons, 100 meters in the sky? How do you do that? It's not the normal thing that people do. They don't lift that sort of weight and move it. How do you even move it to the site? How do you plan something like that? How do you make sure it doesn't fall over? What sort of calculations do you need to do to make sure? So it's important that people know how to install things. It's important that uh, we have engineers that can have the knowledge to know the procedure for installing, have the knowledge to be able to do it safely, and have the knowledge to be able to do it efficiently and on time. And that's something that uh, within this region we're very good at. And we travel the world, engineers from this area travel the world doing this sort of job. And of course, once you install something like a wind turbine, or if you look below and you can see the, uh, the, the stone crusher 
that comes from OMA, uh, the big red machine you'll see there, you must service it. These machines wear out. They're designed to wear out. They're designed to have wear parts. They're designed to uh, run for a certain number of hours and then they must be serviced. Planning that service and uh, working your way through it and knowing how to diagnose problems and knowing how to find solutions is at the center of what an engineer normally does and is at the center of uh, how an engineer engages with industry. So within engineering, the design aspects, the build aspects, the installation aspects, and the service aspects are all broad areas that you can go down. So often I have students that will, uh, that when I discuss with them where they want to, where they want to go to in the future, some will say, oh, I don't want to be stuck in a design office. I want to be on the shop floor. Some will say, oh, I don't want to be in a factory. I want to be out dealing with the customers. There's lots of opportunities within engineering for you to do all of that. And I suppose the, the word at the bottom, manage, encapsulates a lot of that where as an engineer, you will manage a huge projects. I, I always marvel, I go out and visit uh, old students of mine who are now directors of companies and they're managing projects of tens of millions of pounds. And they're managing, I remember them as students and I remember how they were and I remember where they started. And, and I think to see them excel like that is absolutely fantastic. And it's testament to the, the background and it's testament to the development that they've done alongside us in the GI and alongside in their course. And it's good to see. It's good to know that the students that we're putting out are successful. So everything comes down. Uh, a lot of things come down to money in your, in your career. And, you know, engineering careers have become very attractive in a lot of ways, more so than they were 10, 20 years ago. An engineer now is a very well paid career and you can make quite a bit of money and quite a comfortable living as an engineer. I uh, generally come for mechanical engineering as I think it's the broadest and, and you can see that there's very little difference between general engineering and mechanical engineering here. Chemical always uh, attracts a bonus, but remember within Northern Ireland, within Ireland, the number of jobs for chemical engineers are, are vastly lower than the number of jobs for mechanical engineers. So the two, that's why we've designed our courses the way they are, where mechanical and electrical and electronic form the mainstay of the course with renewables sitting in between, as it's a mixture of both, where we're looking at mechanical systems, and we're looking at electrical distribution. So you can see some of the notes here around the starting salaries and 26,000 for a starting salary is not out of the way for anybody. And, and you can see it's a 2015 guide, but the, the, the numbers have gone up since. So our options are this, just to recap, our options are this. Our options are for engineering at McGee, you can start via entry from your foundation study year. The traditional way to enter is with your A-levels or your HND or a mix of both and, uh, or your BTEC subsidiary diplomas and a mix of all that, which is all available on the website. And you'll enter one of the courses there, the, the standardized courses. Once you're finished, you can go out to industry. And, and I really recommend people do go out to industry. But if you don't want to go straight away, we have a master's level study program in smart manufacture, and I'm quite happy to direct anybody to our, our course director for that, that I've developed the course with, uh, where it lets us look at smart manufacture and it lets us look at uh, how, we, uh, how we can take your learning to the next level. So looking across the courses there, if we look at our facilities, we have an engineering building on campus that's dedicated to design and manufacture. We teach around the campus uh, for your standardized lectures, but where we're doing practical work and where we're doing uh, practical lecturing, they'll all be done within the engineering building. I would encourage anybody who has an interest in uh, coming to do engineering at Mead to come up and see our facilities. We've worked hard to make sure that we create an active learning space. We've worked hard to create a the chance for you to come 
and build the things that you've thought about, the, the chance to partake in projects, the chance to partake in competitions where you can, uh, where you can really realize, your, you realize the ideas you've had in your head. But coupled to that, uh, we, we believe that when you're learning the science of engineering, that is the, the physics, the, 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 the different aspects of how maths feeds into engineering, it's important that we uh, do practical work to show you how that behaves in real life. So things like pneumatics, things like hydraulics, things like bending of beams, things like twisting and torsion and welding and connection and machining, and all those things that uh, over the period of your time in engineering you'll be exposed to. And if we look at the electrical courses, that looks at things like modeling distribution of electricity, looking at circuits, looking at control, and all the things that go together to form uh, that discipline. So we can see then some of the facilities here. I've just listed them out, but they, these aren't endless and there's some new machines since. But if we look across it, what we're trying to get across is that when you, as a student, come along to McGee, one of the things that we do is we run a passport program to get you into the workshop. Once you've passed your passport program, really you can, uh, you can begin to come and use the facilities. The team that we have is very keen on making things. The team that we have is very keen on uh, it's very keen on developing you as a maker, as a manufacturer. And I think then whenever this goes out to industry, uh, the reports come back from industry that McGee students are very useful immediately, very useful to industry immediately because they understand how things go together, because they understand how things are made, they understand material selection and manufacturing techniques. And that's important. Uh, in terms of content, these slides uh, that you'll see over the next couple of slides are all reasonably heavy in terms of their titles and, and, and their content, but, and they're probably for you to look at at another time, but across every engineering course that you will do across the UK and indeed worldwide, you do three basic subjects. You do science, maths, and design. The design is how things are made, and how we can make them. So that's manufacturing, your design for manufacture, your design for assembly, how we make things that people can use, your ergonomics, your aesthetics and material selection. Your science is the statics and the dynamics. How do they move? How do they stay upright? How do they fall over? How do you make sure it's strong enough? Your thermodynamics then comes in, how do they react to heat? How do they react to fluid, for fluid mechanics? And that's all encapsulated in your science. Underpinning all of that is the maths. And your maths comes down to being a large amount of algebra and some calculus that, that underpins the numbers that you need to make decisions. When we, when we enter the design process in first year, we are given quite a wide berth. We're given quite a wide breadth of, of, of understanding. And we narrow that as we come to year four, where our decisions are driven by the calculations that we do. So over the three, four year period, your skills are developed. You'll note that in year three, there's a placement for engineering. This uh, is mandatory and part of the course, and obviously an award. Uh, it forms part of your award. You get a diploma in industrial studies. It also can form a year toward your uh, industrial experience. The university has a very successful program for placing students. And generally every year we will place 100% of the engineering students. This allows you to take the two years you've learned uh, in house on campus and put it into practice in industry. And, and certainly as a course director, I find that the students that come back having had a very good placement make excellent final year students. They're, they're tuned in, they are ready to enter the world of work, they are ready to do a final year, and they're ready to take on the challenges that, that come along with the final year of any engineering course. So if you keep it in mind that, that engineering forms science of how things work, it forms the maths to tell you what the numbers are to make them work, 
and it encapsulates design and materials then to allow you to make things. And you can see the renewables is fairly similar as part from in second year and in final year we begin to look more so at the electrical energy side of things and we look at so how is energy generated for example, how are uh, how are power systems distributed around the world? How do we get the energy from the power station to your homes without losing any of it? And how do we control that in terms of systems and signals? And then in, final, in the final semester, you begin to look at the idea of renewable energy and smart grids and how this all fits together for you to design and implement uh, that within our, 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 within our current structure. So, the electrical and electronic course content then is very, very specific to electrical and electronic engineering. It is where, where renewables and mechanical are, are reasonably similar in areas. Uh, the maths is the only similar uh, underpinning technology or underpinning area within electrical and electronics. This is a traditional electrical and electronics course. It, uh, it, it's split reasonably, reasonably evenly between the electrical, which would be your higher voltage, your higher power, and the electronics, which is your lower power, lower voltage, and more control systems. And we try to split that between the two. And you can see here in the structures, you can see, for example, uh, in year two, semester one, we have electrical and electronic machines. We have electrical and energy systems. And in the second semester of that, then we're more into the electronics, where we have microcontrollers and circuit analysis. So we do try to split it uh, semester to semester. And uh, overall, we've had some ex excellent students go out from this course that have gone to uh, the likes of ESB, and some are heading then on to different companies. A number have gone have gone to E and I in Donegal, where they make electrical cabinets and they make electrical distribution systems for companies like Google and Apple and a number of others there. So again, very useful course, uh, a very industry savvy course and a very industry applicable course. So certainly one to consider if uh, electrical and electronic are your thing. Uh, so just to recap on the, uh, on the computing at McGee, and I know computing is not the center point of today's presentation, but uh, within the computing, we have the traditional computer science. So if you want programming, then software systems development and computer science is your thing. If it's more into the hardware, then information technologies is your thing. And if it's a coupling of both, then uh, artificial intelligence would be the course to go for there. So I've gone through the courses. I've gone through the uh, I've gone through the, the, the what you do on the courses. But where could you go? And I, I I truly believe that the future will be for technologically savvy students, technologically savvy people. The amount of technology that we interact with increases year on year on year. We have more technology. Uh, more technology with us. We have more technology uh, interaction and therefore we need to know one how to use it but we need to know how to develop ourselves. We need to know how how we can make our lives better with technology uh, and that can be everything from industrial things like machine to machine communication. It can be everything from agriculture where we have there's a vastly uh, quick growing emphasis on robotic uh, agriculture and vertical farming. And then very topical at the minute, we have the medical. So we have optimized patient care, optimized uh, structure and, and so on. So we can see here what the, uh, what the sort of thing is for our engineers and where our engineers would go. You know, one of the areas is machine learning. The more machines we have, the more we have to work out how we'll enter this era of intelligent machines, how we will get to the point where machine to human communication is safe, is important, and uh, can bring us to a new levels of productivity, a new levels of manufacture that didn't exist before. Uh, 
you know, one of the examples where this, this becomes real is, is a research project we recently, myself and a, and a, and a lecturer from the computing end of things, recently completed where we uh, brought machine learning into industry with CDE in Cookstown, where we began to gather data from this industrial machine to enable predictive maintenance. So to tell you when it's going to need maintenance, to take out the skills of the operator and implant them into an artificial intelligence scenario where we can uh, where we can predict maintenance. If we can predict maintenance, we can plan maintenance. If we can plan maintenance, we can reduce the overall cost of doing that maintenance. So very, very good for industry. And we have a number of projects like this that we do all the time where we liaise with industry and we work to find solutions. Solutions that can make industry more stable in Northern Ireland and can create new jobs. And these come from the ideas that the academics have, that the students have, and, and the technology developments that take place on campus. Uh, I, I did look up to see the demand for engineers. And amazingly, engineering companies will need 182,000 people per year. Running up to 2022, we have 55,000 of a shortfall of skilled engineering professionals per year. And if we look at what's in the most demand in the world, Mechanical engineers, electrical and electronics engineers, and software engineers are at the top. So that's a brilliant emphasis for you and a brilliant opportunity for you to come and study an engineering course. You, if they're at the top now, we'll hardly uh, fill those 55,000 skilled professionals per year any quickly. So in terms of uh, career opportunities, we have a great opportunity to move forward. So, uh, in terms of what's available on campus, we have student societies, they run events, a couple of them are here. Uh, we have our engineering society at McGee, and we have our computing society at McGee, and they all run events throughout the year to create a, a, a social atmosphere around the campus and to allow people to network, to allow people to meet companies, to allow people to meet each other, and to allow uh, students to, to develop together so that they can, they, can, they can work together in the future. So to recap, just before we go on to, to, to one other area, we have new investment, we have new equipment, we have small classes at McGee. We don't have hundreds in a class. So the outcome of that is that your lecturers know you. So that means your lecturer can help you when you need help, they can push you when you need pushed, and they can assist you when you need assistance. We have extensive tutoring and support. We have great mobility between courses and we have the ability for research stay on. If you never want to leave education, uh, we have the ability for you to stay and the ability for you to, to work with us uh, in research development. Maybe that might be in SIDRA. It might be in our, our, our cognitive analytics laboratory. So if we look at the entry requirements, uh, each of the courses has specific entry requirements. And I'm going to I'm going to put a, a, a proviso on all of this. I'm the course director for the engineering courses. And every engineering course throughout the country has to have a level that you come in. But these are as wide as we can make them. They are as, a, a, as good as we can make them. And they, they provide us the opportunity then to let you come in. So our grades are generally three Bs and you can see the list of A-level mathematics and A-level subjects that you need. If you have some of the desirable subjects, for example, for the maths or physics at A-level, we can offer a two grade reduction. So you only have to get a B and two Cs. There's requirements there for BTEC and there's requirements for GCSE maths as well. The one thing I will say to you is contact me Contact the course director if you have any questions about this. We take in students with a range of backgrounds, with a range of subjects, with a range of things. We have to have a framework, but there's lots of room within that framework if you're not coming from a traditional A-level or a traditional BTEC, National Extended Diploma and so on profile. There's lots of ways in, and the best way to do it is talk to me, talk to the course director. So. In terms of that then, 
we have within Ulster, we have our recruitment webinar events here, and there's lots of them there. If you go to the University of Ulster website, forward slash events, you can see what, uh, what the events that you're gonna to go to, or you want to engage with. If we, uh, if we have a look on them, with on the screen here, if I get this moved forward. There are open days and open days provide you a fantastic opportunity to come and see the campus, to come and talk to the people that are on the campus, talk to the researchers, the students there that you can talk to. There are, uh, are people that can answer your questions directly. And I think one of the things that we're very keen on for McGee is for uh, students and prospective students to come on campus and see what we do, meet the people that are there and, and see what sort of relationship you're going to have with them. You will spend a lot of time studying, doing engineering. You'll spend a lot of time doing a lot of work. So it's important that you're comfortable. It's important that you're happy from the start of your course right through to your, your successful graduation. So if we have a look here, you can see some of the open days in McGee in particular is Friday the 18th of September. And uh, you're very welcome to come along to the McGee campus on that day. And uh, we will have a range of activities available for students to do. And obviously it'll be open campus and open workshop to allow you to see and experience everything that you would do as a student. So definitely get in touch. The, uh, the get in touch part of it is get in touch with me, get in touch with admissions and get in touch with the marketing team at Ulster to find out more about what we can do to assist you to get in. Now I believe our team are there to take any of your questions, take any of your chat. I'll be here for another 15, 20 minutes and uh, quite happy to take any questions over the chat regarding the, uh, uh, regarding the courses. Also very happy to take email at jp.quinn at ulster.ac.uk. So jp.quinn at ulster.ac.uk. And uh, even if you want to phone and you want to chat in person, there's no problem. We can do that over the next, uh, over the next while to ensure that you're, that you're fully uh, informed about what the opportunities are for engineering at McGee. Okay, thank you very much for your time and I'll sign off and we can do any questions there.